This is part two of the unreleased video games, and I'm covering generally NES prototypes and games that were not released in the United States where I hail from. We're going to start out with a great one called Holy Diver, which was made by Irem, and they made games like Ninja Spirit, R-Type, and The Hunt. They're a great company that eventually went bankrupt, sadly enough, but they have an excellent catalog of games, and they made the great Kung Fu that was also on Nintendo, as well as in the arcade. This is a game that works quite well with Turbo Fire. It's got all the makings of a good action game. You got elements of a Karnov, Ninja Gaiden, a little bit of Castlevania. I'm definitely going to have to do a video on Turbo Fire in general because it's very interesting to see how much a game can adaptively change the moment you enable Turbo Fire. You have a game like Contra, the moment you use a spread gun in Turbo Fire, it pretty much makes the need for a 30 man code unnecessary. Then you play a game like Final Fight on Super Nintendo and you're literally using Turbo Fire and it's depressing the button 16 times a second which pretty much makes the enemies unable to even touch you unless you have your back to them. It's ridiculously absurd to see in action and I'm definitely going to do a video on that as well. This is Holy Diver, great game to play, released in Japan only, not in the United States unfortunately. Uh, we're going to move on to several more games. We're going to start with uh, Secret Ties, which was a game that was made by Vic Toke. And they made games like GoGo13. And uh, even a cover art here looks like the guy from GoGo13. And one thing that's quite interesting about this is the moment you start the first stage, the music is eerily reminiscent of game music from another game, as you will see. And I need not even mention what game it's copied off of. You could pretty much tell immediately. If I didn't know better, I would think I'm playing a game made by Konami right now. They didn't do a whole lot to mask their copycat nature for this music here, but still pretty nifty. And I'm not entirely sure whether or not this game was ever released. It may just have been in prototype format, but it's a pretty cool game, good soundtrack, even though it is a copycat of the Castlevania catalog. This is Secret Ties, and I'm going to go through several more games to give you more recommendations for games to try out. We have uh, Splatterhouse Wampaku Graffiti, and if you're familiar with Splatterhouse games in general on Genesis, PS3, the arcade, they're extremely violent, gory, bloody games, and this is the complete opposite. This is more of a cutesy, super deformed graphics, you know, Dragon Ball Z style graphics here. If you have kids and you want to introduce them to a Splatter House in general, this is the perfect way to go. And then when they're of age, you can show them the real deal. Good solid gameplay, good graphics, good music. Definitely a game I would have picked up if it came out in the United States. And I do like the super deformed graphic style of games. You have Konami World 2, Kid Dracula that Konami made, this game here. I mean, they're pretty interesting to play. This would almost be the equivalent of Lego games that we have nowadays back then. Anyways, this was Splatterhouse Mampaku Graffiti. And let's go through a few more games and see what else we have to try out. We have Robocop vs. The Terminator. And this game is quite interesting to behold. I mean, there, there's bugs from the get-go the moment you play this. It's designed in such an odd fashion that they definitely didn't make it through the whole development process. And I'm pretty sure they put a version of this on Super Nintendo as well as Sega Genesis Mega Drive as well. And you'll see that there's a few bugs from the get-go the moment we start this game. But even the bad and goofy games are fun for a laugh. Right from the get-go, we have considerable slowdown with just a few enemies and movement on the screen. 
And when I first played this, I wasn't entirely sure where to go because you have objects in the foreground and background, and you do not know what you could even bypass. I mean, right here, I cannot by bypass that steel girder. And I didn't know I could go on this pipe initially, but now I do. Then when I got to the right over here, I didn't think I could go through the steel girder because I couldn't go through it above. So I went left and ended up dying in the bat over here, but now I know better. So it's a, just a little bit, a tad of trial and error, just figuring out where you need to go in this game. And most action games in general are pretty straightforward as far as where you need to go. Now, I am a fan of uh, Terminator and Robocop, and obviously if you want to play a great Terminator game, you want to play Terminator on Sega Genesis, or even the superior version with a great soundtrack on Sega CD. And I'm a fan of Robocop, the movies, the TV show, the animated series. But this is Robocop vs. the Terminator, this is a prototype for NES, unreleased. This is Bioforce Ape. This was a big deal in 2011 when it finally came to fruition and leaked as a ROM online. And there's one thing that was quite noticeable about this when I played it that stood out considering how old this Nintendo system was. One thing you wouldn't expect in a Nintendo game it's something that was in Genesis games at the time. Something that involved blast processing. Look at that. I'm moving like Sonic the Hedgehog in a Nintendo game. This is almost unbelievable. And the only game I could truly think of that had this type of speed was Battletoads when you did the Rocket Pack levels like in Stage 3. I mean, that's kind of cool. So this game did come out roughly when Genesis was already out and Sonic the Hedgehog was coming out, so I'm pretty sh pretty certain that they did this in the vein of trying to replicate the speed of Sonic the Hedgehog, but this is Bioforce Ape, and it's an interesting game. And we have uh, California Raisins, The Grape Escape, Capcom. I'm not sure why this game wasn't released, but it's also a pretty interesting game. Strikes me as like a Darkwing Duck, DuckTales, I mean it's got the general makings of a Capcom game in general. Got a little bit of Chippendale going on here, a little bit of Mega Man. And I'm sucking at it. <laughs> But this is California Raisins, and I'm next going to show you a game that really took me by surprise. It was released in the last few years, and it's based off an of animated movie called Happily Ever After. We're talking a game that's a decent actioner with Snow White in it. I wouldn't even expect this to be possible just by seeing the cover art and knowing about the game and the context of the type of character you're playing as. It's definitely a step above a Wizard of Oz style game that I've played on Super Nintendo and on NES. And I've only discovered one true flaw in this game, but I could live with it. It is a cool game. So I have my action button. Normally when you're in a game and you push the action button repeatedly, you could pretty much have like turbo fire. But in this game, if you push the attack button repeatedly, it goes into your special attack, which is kind of counterproductive as far as you trying to attack enemies with a multiple amount of hits in a row. But once you understand how it works, it's livable. So I push turbo, basically push the attack button a few times in a row and I'm in a whirlwind. And the only way I could break out of it is by pushing the A button. So now that we have that in mind... So you want to attack enemies and just attack, do the attack button once at a time, unless you jump in the air, then you're okay.
but not a bad game by any means. It really is a, a truly interesting game to discover. It's a gem. When I first did this part, I wasn't quite sure what to do. I thought I could jump on these little poles that are sticking out of the water, and of course this happened. And I just rewound time, you know, using the rewind feature. So I didn't realize that I had to do kind of a little bit of a puzzle using my whirlwind, like so. And it brought a little pad out. So it has a very light puzzle solve in here. So anyways, this was Happily Ever After. It's a pretty decent actioner, a gem, a surprise, you know, diamond and rough. I've never even knew about this game until the last few years.